Hello, and welcome to the Writing Guys podcast, where we help writers get inside a guy's head by answering burning questions on how men think. I'm Lindsay McCall, today's moderator, and our hosts are Michael Aspen and C.T. Andrews. Hello, everyone. Hey, y'all. All right, guys. So today's question is uh, facial hair. What are the pros, cons, or idiosyncrasies? I got to tell you, I'm, I'm actually excited to do this episode because uh, this is a thing that women cannot experience for the most part. Um, they don't have facial hair, right? So this is this is one of those topics that I think uh, women that are writing a male character, if they want to give them a beard, there's a lot of little little parts to having a beard that I think would be really great little filler to bring their character some richness. So I'm very excited about that. And so one of the, one of the first things that I will mention about owning a beard is that they can be freaking itchy on occasion, especially when they're in a growing out phase. Uh, there's transitional periods where it will just, and, and typically men don't have long nails. So it's hard for us to get in there and scratch where the beard is. I remember at one point I, I had trimmed mine too short and I was, it was growing back out and it was in a really itchy phase. And I happened to work with a bunch of women and this one woman had really long nails and I was lamenting how much it itched. And she just reached over and she started scratching my beard. And it was, it was like, it was like whenever you find just the right spot behind a dog's ear and he's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like just transcended. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I transcended space and time and could see the future of my life. And it was this woman scratching my freaking beard. It was amazingly good. So, um, and, and I have, I have on occasion even used a fork to scratch into my beard. Um, obviously it then goes into the dishwasher. I don't put it back in the drawer, but a fork has been a very useful tool to scratching. But now my beard itch is just thinking about it. It's very frustrating. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm very, yeah. I'm very aware of my beard and my facial hair all of a sudden. Now <laughs> talk about how itchy they could be. Yeah. Uh, so just, just to clarify for listeners who aren't watching the videos, oh, yes. uh, Michael has a full beard, but it's trimmed neatly around his jawline. And um, uh, CT has a goatee that is also trimmed neatly. They're not, neither one of them have long dangling facial hair. I'm sorry if that's not the right word. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not the right word. I apologize. Yeah. What's so that's the right, right word? Right. Uh, I'm not sure. Bushy, bristly. There's a yeah. bunch of okay. terms, but yeah. I'm sorry, back on track. I just wanted to break in and explain that. CT, you were going to talk about the itchy beard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I was I was actually just going to talk about my, well, the, the beard is itching now that Michael mentioned that they're itchy. Uh, and the reality is, it, for me, they're not so much itchy as it is the physical sensation of something always being on your face. I always feel it on my face. Like, I yeah. think that, now I'm bald, so I may not have much of a cross-reference, but my my me memory serves if memory serves correctly you don't really feel the hair on your head now you can feel it if it falls down on your face you can feel it if it kind of drapes over your ears i'm sure but hair on your head you can't there's not a specific physical sensation that says i've got hair on my head but with a facial hair there is for me there is there's always the feeling that i've got hair on my face um, and it's kind of interesting. Um, I like what Michael said. The reason I, I have facial hair is because it is uniquely male. It is uniquely a male thing. Men, men have whatever hormones is required to naturally grow hair out of their faces and women simply don't. And so it's kind of a uniquely male thing to do. Walk around with, with hair on, on your face. <laughs> specifically so. without hair on your head <laughs> so um which is kind of i don't know I, I like i like having facial hair even though it drives me berserk well, most what are some of those cons yeah well for, i want to i wanted to pop in there and and, and tag on to something he said first and then i definitely can move into the cons i think guys look better with a beard period i think that if you were to compare a guy without a beard and a guy with a beard 
it, if it, if a beard is done correctly, the guy will look better with a beard. I just, I think that that is just like a universal truth. I know this is my own personal uh, opinion, but it's right. So just deal with it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. A guy that doesn't have a beard just looks like a guy that doesn't have a beard. He hasn't grown but it out guy, yet. Yeah, but you know, sure, maybe that's the case. But a guy with a beard looks like someone who's chosen to spend the time and effort to cultivate a beard. And it does take time and effort, especially if you're like me and you don't really grow facial hair very quickly. I will say this. If you'll notice, um, earlier Lancey defined my uh, goatee as trim. And she's right in mm. so much as the length of it is trimmed. Yeah. I try to shape it. But I do not trim the hair. If you look, this hair is long, like. That's long mm. hair. And when hair gets long, I love the shape it gives to the, the facial hair. The longer the, the hair is, the more of a shape it, it has. And I love that because otherwise it would just look like, you know, closely shaven hair on, on my face. So I, 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 I purposefully try to grow it long so that it has that sort of horseshoe shape and the way it kind of comes together with you know the hair on my chin my chinny yeah, chin i'm glad you showed me that because i did not realize that i mean i actually learned something um that's pretty cool i didn't <laughs> yeah and, love... and that proves right there that it's probably more for me than the ladies <laughs> because I, they... love, I love that part where the mustache turns down at the edge of your mouth at the corners of your mouth and comes down and joins into the beard that is one of my favorite little points of the beard that <laughs> that it joins the whole ensemble together as it were yes, but yes let's let's jump into some of the cons um so you're talking about length i can tell you one of the ones that is very frustrating to me is whenever my mustache starts to grow too long um and i i do tend to trim my mustache i think more than ct does uh is it will like all of a sudden it'll get involved with your food like you're trying to eat food and all of a sudden your mustache is like curling into your lips and it, you're starting to get it in your mouth and you can, and, and for me, especially the section right under my nose tends to kind of point in towards a V like this. And then everything from my nose out kind of goes out. So you end up with this little wedge shape if you're not careful and you have, so I keep it trimmed up a little bit so that you don't, so you don't see that. It only becomes apparent if the hair starts to grow too long. So, um, yeah, that, that is, anno that's one of the annoyances of the mustache. Uh, and then, boy, there's many, many more. I'll let CT jump me, in and throw me, in one me, of his. Let me add on to that real quick. Yeah, go ahead. I completely agree. Where I let the side of the mustache grow long, I don't want it to grow over my top lip. Yeah, right here. It's, I don't like it being too far over the top lip. Number one, I think it looks kind of kind of bummy. Yeah. And for another thing, it you're constantly getting it pinched between your lips, and it feels like there's hair in your mouth because mm. – there's oh. hair in your mouth, yeah. you know? And so uh, I get a, a razor. Well, I've got a little green thing. It's got a little bitty, like, electric shaver on it. And yep. I, I'm constantly having to trim the hair just over the top of the lip. I don't want to go too far because then I'll cut the length off the side. It's a yep. trick, y'all. It's tricky. It is. Um, how often How often do you trim? Is it every day? No, it should be, but it's probably twice a week. Twice a week, I'll go ahead and touch up where, where it's starting to brush over my top lip a little bit. I can, I can for the for this part up here, um, I will usually trim that about once every couple of weeks, depending on how long it's growing and in how long and how much public FaceTime I'm putting out there. Yeah. Um, but uh the actual the actual beard itself mine actually grows fairly slowly so i will usually only trim mine about once a month whenever i'm trying to keep it trim and then there have been times where i've let it go longer like around christmas this past year i let it grow for quite a long time yeah. and it got it got really long and bushy and i felt it on my shirt which is another thing that i always hate i i do not uh the guys that grow really long long beards the ones that are down like into their chest I get why you do it. I I don't want to do that because when it starts rubbing against my shirt, I'm like, oh, it's time, to, it's time to trim that son of a gun. So yeah. Anyway, 
So that's another yeah. one of those annoyances. Do you guys remember several years ago um, in baseball? We're big baseball fans. I don't know if y'all watch baseball or not, but it was a trend, especially with the Astros, to grow those big bushy goatees. Yep. And my husband got on that, got on that crazy train. And was growing his goatee, and I was like, "Oh, yeah." Do you <laughs> I like realize, that? Do you realize that that's actually a tradition in baseball? Baseball's full of tradition, hmm. and superstitions. You mean? You're both. right. Both. It's, it's more. It's, it's far more superstition. Yeah, but the idea is when you go into the the postseason, don't shave. Yeah. Don't ever shave. Don't change your socks. Don't you know? Yeah. 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 So by the end of the postseason, these men who actually grow their beards out long and who actually win their games and have to and prolong their time in the postseason, they end up with this just ungainly, unshaved, uh, untrimmed, just beard that just goes everywhere. And so, yeah, there's um, there was believe- there's there's also trends in men's fashion. I don't think I don't think that. Um, they're as flashy as in women's fashion, but there was a trend there for a while, uh, about eight or 10 years ago, where the, the statement was, how do you take care of your beard? And is you wash it and you're done, right? You don't trim it. You don't do anything, right? You just let nature take its course. And, uh, that was a trend for a little while. And, um, I don't know where that, where that originated from, but I never did take it into that. I always trimmed mine. I, I don't like it when it's too long and too bushy. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. So what kind of grooming uh, materials, tools, and stuff do y'all use? So CT mentioned the trimmer. I've got a trimmer that's battery operated that has two different settings on it or two different parts to it. One is a a wide trimmer. That's probably about an inch, inch and a quarter wide that I can use to trim the, the length of the beard. Um, And I'll also use that to get like a rough edging underneath down here. And then it's got a slide up, very fine toothed trimmer that can trim really close and and get really close to the skin. And I'll use that to trim off all of the hair that's growing in under here that I want to, to keep away. Because the, the bottom part of my beard and, and the bottom part of a lot of men's beards tends to have these weird swirl patterns. So mine actually comes down and it all swirls to the right side of my face and then kind of like does this quick twist back. And I hate that little swirl twist down here and so I trim just to where that stops. And, um, and so, so mine, does, I don't let it get down onto my neck. Uh, there are guys that do that have neck beards. That's actually a term for a specific type of person, but um, they'll have, they'll have the beard come down on their neck. And I think that most guys, when I see that, it looks bad. I don't, I don't like that look as much as a nicely trimmed and then and cleaned up the bottom yeah. part of the beard. Yeah, so that's that's probably the first and primary tool is a trimmer of some kind. Yeah, for sure, a trimmer. It, if if you if you settle the beard where all the hair is of the same length, and you don't have it sticking out everywhere, it, it requires water and a brush. Yeah, and it's all the same length. Then you can take a trimmer and just sort of well, here comes that sun. Here comes the sun. Yeah, uh, you can you can use oh, the trimmer to just kind of shave just barely shave by touching the beard and and you clip off all that long extraneous beard but it's interesting michael was talking about how swirls one of the tools that i or how how your beard swirls it grows in like cowlicks one of the tools that i use is just a simple razor to get right in here right and to get right in here because i want that to be shaven but if you look real close the hair coming out of my lip swirls like that oh yeah (laughs) <laughs> or yeah. like that and so it covers that naked part off so it all, i'll constantly walk around with more you know more of this on one side than the other side because it's swirl i'm constantly having to tug on it and pull on it like that you know and so that i don't look lopsided on my beard but I don't you guys- know. one of the things that's very frustrating about mine in that area as you can kind of tell that it it it's like a perfectly straight line until right here when it like jumps up and then comes over and mm-hmm. right there. And it always bothers me. And there's, I'm always like when I'm on, when I'm on these, 
podcast and I can see myself. I'm always like doing this, trying to like lay yeah. it down, get everything in line. It's like, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you do it right, it just looks like you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a very interesting <laughs> statement you made, Lancey. I was <laughs> contemplating that. Yeah, that's so exactly Do you guys right. use um like conditioning products? I, I have a son-in-law that ha- is very proud of his big giant beard and he has all kinds of conditioners and stuff like that. Do y'all have stuff like that that you use? Um, I am aware of them, but I have not used them in any length of, for any length of time, because I do not like the oily type of feel they leave in my beard. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and they do give a glossier look to your beard, but I prefer the just natural hair look. So I don't, I do not do that, but I can, I understand why, especially if you've got a really long one and you want to kind of highlight it and, and you've got hair. The other thing is, is it's hair. And hair will hair is actually dead once it's once it's out off onto your face. This is actually dead dead um, protein cells, and so it will slowly degrade and split. And that's where split ends come from is like heat and stuff. So if you have a really long beard and you're not conditioning it, it can start to get frizzy and have split ends and problems like that. So just like a woman with long hair, you need to do things to to control that. Yeah. So, um. But- I can say back back in 2021, about a year and a half ago, the beard I have now was down easily three inches further than it mm. is now. Like it was a long, I had grown it out real long. Um, and at that time I had a, I had two different brands of, uh, it's called beard balm, which is kind of like a waxy substance that you can shape yep. your beard with and you can put it in there and it's supposed to make the beard healthier too. I don't see where it ever really did its job because I'd put it in and then the beard would just like do whatever it wanted. <laughs> so so I, I use it. I, I, one of the, my two, one of those two brands I prefer over the other one, but it doesn't really do a whole lot right now. I'm just trying to grow it out to where I've got that Shakespearean point right here. Mm, nice. You're, You're doing a nice job. job. It's looking good. <laughs> I, yeah, I think so. I saw, it's fine. It's starting to shape it. You know, you had me, so you had me is, thinking of the lines from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou about Dapper Dan and the line from Jackie Childs on Seinfeld, where he's like, Who told you to put a bomb on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, is the consistency of the hair on your face in your beard different from the hair on the top of your head? Yes. Yeah. yeah the, the hair on my head is much softer. The, my beard hair is much coarser and and stiffer. Um, yeah. one of the things that my wife doesn't like about whenever I trim my mustache, usually the first day or two is that because I t- do tend to trim it a little bit shorter is it kind of bristles out and it'll like when I kiss her and stuff, it'll poke her in the face or poke her in the nose. And she doesn't like that. But once it, once it grows to a certain length, it kind of lays down and it's not much as much of an issue to so jump back to products. Um, there is a shave oil that I use, I think it's called shave secret. So, um, so when you're shaving your face and you're actually shaving your entire face, um, you can use a soap or you can use shaving cream, or you can even use a shave oil. And, but if you're using a soap or a shaving cream, you can't really see the hair. Once you get it on your face, you can't see your hair, but it doesn't typically matter because you're shaving it all off anyway. So anywhere that still has shaving cream or shaving soap, you just hit it with the razor and now you've, you've shaved off that hair. But when you're trying to keep a good edge on the end of your beard down here on your at your neckline and you're trying to sh- actually shave that with a razor so that it's really smooth, which you would do for um, like if you're going if you're going out somewhere and you need to dress up and you want to have a very clean cut, very clean appearance. Or I have a little bit. My beard kind of creeps up my cheeks a little bit right here. Just very faintly. You can see it. Um, sometimes I'll trim that down and then shave it so that it's a very clean line on the jawline coming down from my, from my ears, uh, or from my sideburns. Um, anyway, shave oil works really, really well because it, it moistens the skin and it softens up the hair and it provides a lubricant so that the blade can go across your skin without nicking you, but still allows you to see the hairline. So you can, you can shave right up to it. So that's one of those products that I use and has a very nice masculine smell to it without being overwhelming. It's a very subtle, soft scent that you can only smell if you get up close. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. I think the talking about 
women's perspectives on beards. Um, I get the, I am of the mind or I have the impression, the consensus that I've gotten is that most women that I encounter like men with facial hair. They like having that beard uh, because I think it does say something uniquely masculine. Um, what I can't understand though is kissing a woman with a beard. I, I don't see how they can like that. It's hair yeah. on that part of your face yeah. during that sort of intimate moment. And man, it, I, I don't think I, I would like that. You know, uh, if I were to kiss a woman with say a beard, <laughs> it's not going to happen, but it's, yeah, that's a, that's a process in my head. It's like, they like men with beards. They like kissing men. Do they like kissing men with beards? They seem to, and yeah. I don't understand. My I don't have a lot she of, does, but she does. Yeah, but I don't. I don't understand it either. That is an enigma that will never be solved for me. Yeah, I do not I, I understand that. I can't share that with. I can't share those thoughts with you because the men I've dated have always been clean shaven. Baby Aside, face. Didn't you say your husband, husband has a goatee? My husband has a goatee, but he keeps it trimmed really tight. Like, and his hair color. He's kind of a. a um, strawberry blonde so his hair color kind of matches his skin color so you, until you get up close you may not even realize he has like a goatee right. and it's super soft and so you just don't you don't notice it right yeah um oh, yeah. i can tell I have, you i have though dated a guy that like had some growth like you know two days growth or something and it's really rough on your skin when you kiss That's like it will you get done kissing and your my face, the woman's face will be all red. You know? yeah. At that stage, it's much more like sandpaper because the hair is like sticking straight out and it's very abrasive. Yeah. 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 One of the, and, speaking about kissing, one of the things I really do like about having a beard is I really like whenever like my daughters kiss my cheek. I really like when they kiss me in this area of my cheek and I don't like being kissed in this area of my cheek. So it's an automatic like, it points the kids when they're wanting my two daughters, when they kiss me on my cheeks, it, it like forces them to kiss me where I like it the most. So that's like one little side benefit that I would never have realized until I had kids. Right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's good. Uh, an advantage I have over you, Michael, in that arena is that I don't grow hair right here. Oh, like yeah. my jawline, if I were to grow, if I had this much growth, on my jawline, it would look like I was a uh, maybe a radiation patient or something. Watchy <laughs> and stringy, and it would just be terrible. Which is I why don't I'm, think. Sorry. If I if I could grow a full beard, I would, but I can do it. Would you say, Lancey? I, you said something. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I tell you someone who has worn a beard for a long time that I just think has a terrible beard. And I, I hope I don't get any heat for this is Keanu Reeves. Oh, it's, God. it's real patchy, you know, no, it looks yeah, terrible. He, he, he struggles. Agree. He struggles yeah. with having a patch on the sides. Like what yeah. he was just talking about. It's kind of, as patchy. much as I love him, that yeah. beard, Oof. he can, yeah. he could go, he would do well to go for the goatee look, I think. And yeah. you know, even just the, the like a nice trim around his jawline, I think mm -hmm. that would look stellar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But uh, yeah, they're fun to have. I, I think they do age me because when I shave it off, I, I feel like I look much younger. But my chin is always smaller than I remember it being. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, where'd my chin go? It's yeah. gone. When yeah. I let my hair grow really long on my beard and then I trim it off, I'm like, where'd that's like the whole bottom half of my face is gone. My chin is gone. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of an interesting thing about having a beard. What about so, when you think of a part of our question asked about idiosyncrasies? Uh, what pops in your head when you think about that? Oh, idiosyncrasies. You know what? I don't know if this is an idiosyncrasy or if it's just something I don't like about having a beard. It has made, okay, the world of sleeping before I decided to grow a beard out and after I decided to grow a beard out is a completely different world. 
they are diametrically opposed because I'm a stomach sleeper and I oh. tend to sleep like this. Oh. And the hair just, oh, it's at that length now to where it'll fold up and like tickle my nose. And I don't know it's my hair. So I think it's a bug maybe. Or it's just, oh, it just drives me insane. I'm sorry. I'm just giggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. <laughs> but, oh, it's a pain. Oh, it's just such a pain. My husband uh, has a problem because he has a C he has to have a CPAP machine. Oh, and yeah. that's one of the reasons he keeps his uh goatee trim so tight is so that he can get the seal on the mask. Yeah. Uh, because if he ever lets it grow out, oh, uh it seal, just yeah. causes him all kinds of trouble trying to get any sleep. So yeah. as someone who lives in a colder climate than C T and Lancy, they live down in Texas and I live up in Missouri. Um, we do get pretty cold weather on occasion where it'll drop down like into the single digits Fahrenheit. Um, and uh, one of the, one of the interesting things about having a beard is it does tend to keep your face a little warmer, which is nice. But uh, I found uh, because I had some masks from the, the COVID era that uh, wearing a mask in the wintertime is a very nice thing. It keeps your face warm. When you wear a mask over your face, it helps keep your face warm. But the downside to that is the moisture will literally freeze the mask to your beard and your beard and your mask will be frozen together and you'll come in after say shoveling snow in three degree weather with a uh, negative 10 degree wind chill. And you'll have this frost covered mask that's literally frozen to your beard and you're like trying to peel it off and it's yeah. Um, <laughs> it sounds painful. <laughs> it is painful. Um, another quirky thing that I don't think a lot of people would ever think about if they've never had a beard is that your beard can and does retain smells sometimes for days um so uh one of those smells that it tends to retain for a very long time even if i wash my face multiple times and take a shower is the smell of a female's uh body parts <clears throat> if you get my drift if uh <laughs> If I were eating oysters per se, and uh, next thing you know, two days later, I still smell that. And um, and I don't know if anybody else can smell it, but I can. And it's uh, it's one of those smells that sticks around. Another one is real butter, for me anyway. Not margarine, real butter. If I'm eating something like corn on the cob that has butter and it gets real messy and gets into my mustache, I'll smell that and feel that for days. Yeah. And no amount of hair washing, no amount of washing my face gets rid of it. You just got to wait it out. I, I don't know why. Go yeah, ahead. That's you, weird. You, you can't, we, we can't really talk about facial hair and beards uh, without talking about food. Yeah. Uh, because there's a lot that comes with that. But before I address food, I'll address Michael's previous point. Um, <laughs> and that is, yeah. It's food, you know, you're, Treating it as such, uh, um, when 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 when, and I, I've heard this when she is uh, shaven herself, and there's skin, it's bald there, like it's soft and bald, and you go there with facial hair. I hear it acts like kind of a tickler, like it's uh, like a tickly has like a tickly, tickly bristly kind of effect uh, for the for the woman. So maybe there's another reason why I like growing my beard out a little bit, Just, you know, you know, satisfactory, you know, qualities being what they are, but I'm going to have to uh, buy my wife a razor and give that a try. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, because you know, when they don't have that, that hair, that pubic hair, there's yeah. nothing to get in the way. It's just this hair. Right. And right. so there's like some scintillating sensation lines from what I understand. Um, but yeah, uh, food. Uh, mm. Like I eat a lot of honey. I love honey, and mm. half of it, like peanut butter with honey, and just honey on different pastry style. You know, even tortillas. I'll eat like a sopapilla. Um, the the amount of honey that ends up in the beard and in the mustache, I, it's got to be a large fraction of the amount of honey I actually get in my mouth. Barbecue so sauce. Honey is, yeah, and that acts as a uh, a uh, what would you call it? Where stickies it gets sticky yeah. and hard. Sticky and hard. And, yeah, you know. So that milk. 
I drink milk and yeah. milk gets everywhere. It's it's really crazy. You gotta stay on top of it. Otherwise you'll end up walking to the grocery store with like bits of like gristle and like different, you know, milk and stuff just hanging off your beard. One of the other things I um if I'm ever drinking out of a cup that's a, a regular sized cup, or especially if they're larger like plastic cups, your your mustache on the side acts like a wick. So you'll be taking a drink and if you take it too fast and it gets where the, the, the milk or whatever gets over into your mustache, it'll just start wicking down into your beard. It'll just yeah. start wicking down. And, and then uh, now all of a sudden you've got like a wet, a wet beard. And the thing about, um, the thing about all hair, but it's especially an issue with beard hair is um, it tends to then act like a sponge and it is really hard to get that cleaned out of there unless you yep. go and like wash it. Um, exactly. So if you get, if you're taking a drink of something like milk, which can turn sour and smell bad later, you're, you'll see they're like this, they're doing like yeah. this, they're rubbing like the bottom of their chin and the sides of their face. They're trying yeah. to mop all that up out of there because it kind of pools underneath your chin and all of it. It's yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's a thing. It, yeah. it, food and facial hair is a thing. Absolutely. And Oh, <laughs> Uh, allergies and facial oh. hair uh, oh. is the thing too, because yes. every for a number of reasons, like there's a bunch of reasons why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bunch of reasons. Yeah. Every morning I wake up, I have, I just so I'm an allergy sufferer early in the morning, and I'm always so stuffy. So I have to go every morning, blow my nose, and so I have to, you know, blow it, you know, get it all out of there, and I feel better. And then man, this got, number Michael's doing right now. Man. Yeah. You, you got to do gotta, that. You got to make sure, you know, you got to get all out of there. And if you can't put some hot water on there, yeah. and, you know, for that very specific reason that you have facial hair. I've, I've also found out that dander and pollen can get caught up in your mustache and in your beard. And you will come in from being outside. And like after I mowed, for example, and I'll go like this and all of a sudden it'll release pollens that were kind of just trapped in my beard and I'll, I'll breathe that in and it'll kick off another reaction. So yeah. there's times when I'm like, I've got to go take a shower immediately because I've got all this pollen in my beard and stuff and I will not stop having yeah. um, uh, allergic reactions until I wash it all out. Oh yeah. Facial hair is hell on the immune system, man. Oh, it is. <laughs> yep. The other thing is that um, it's really hard to get the soap out from this part of the beard, from where it where it starts to turn horizontal underneath your chin. It's really hard to get soap out from there. So whenever you're washing your hair and the sides of your beard, you can get direct spray on it pretty easily. It's either coming down from the top or you can get it on the side. But this part under here, you got to tilt your head way back or you've got to have it on a hose where you can get the hose underneath. And it is really easy to leave soap in your beard and not realize it. And now you've got an itchy, like this part down here is like super itchy all day because you got dry soap and they're on your skin underneath your beard. So <laughs> Lancey's just giving us a sad face. I noticed I noticed some of the faces Lancey was making. <laughs> I, was, I was looking for the barf emoji and I couldn't find it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, your face, just your facial expressions say it all. I see you going. Mm -hmm. I can't hide my face. I'm sitting here going, we have talked about a lot of things on this podcast, a lot of things. And this is probably the grossest, <laughs> the grossest <laughs> things we've talked about. Yeah, well, I did not consider this to be a gross topic. I didn't realize it would be gross. I didn't either, but there's a lot to it. Hey, we, we fellas go through a lot for our, our those ladies out there who like facial hair. That's right. I will tell you there's some serious bonding going on right now between you two gentlemen over the <laughs> grossness of your beards. Hey, I take umbrage at the grossness part. Beards are awesome. They are beards worth are the awesome. effort. If you're a young man awesome. and you're on the fence, grow a beard. You'll love it. Yes. Right. So for our authors out there, just take into consideration while your male character is going through this world, if he has a beard, there's some things you might you might have to consider that are going on with that beard. <laughs> yeah, if you don't if you don't want to be too 
grossed out, just stick to the, the lady's perspective on the beard. <laughs> Keep them ignorant. Keep the lady characters ignorant. <laughs> I didn't say that. I did that. Lancey, that was you. <laughs> that was me. That was me. All right. All right. So any final thoughts on this, on beards? Oh, I, could, I could talk about beards all day long, but I don't want to beat it to death. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's products to maintain it. There's different tools you can have to sculpt it and style it. And I, I think it's uh, uh, specifically manly to have a beard. And I, I personally like it. It's like lions, male lions have big manes. Yeah. Well, we don't have manes. We've got beards. Got and so I kind of equate the two. Um, and I, I like I like having my beard. The, the day I shave it off, and I do shave it off probably once every year, I'm happy I do. But I always miss it until it comes back. So. I think I was I think I was 19 years old, maybe 20, when I grew my beard for the first time, and I've never completely shaved it off in that time. Huh. So I've had a beard now for 30 years, um, and uh, beards beards are really great for. Uh, concealing blemishes they're really great for giving you a distinctive look right it's i i uh i have enjoyed having a beard my entire life and i would never want to not have one i don't think i've talked to i've talked to my wife about shaving it off before and she's like i don't even know what you would look like i can't even imagine yeah. right it's just it's just become a part of your personality which i guess is kind of shallow but it's become a part of you i guess um but i i really have enjoyed it and i and i like i like the aspect of having one and i i don't i don't ever want to not have one i did at one time think about shaving down and getting like the fu manchu thing this is back when um the tuttles were really popular on tv and paul senior had that brilliant fu manchu that he wore on on uh what was it east coast choppers i think that was the name of the show or that was the name of the business what was the name of the show orange county choppers that was the name of the that was the name of the business that they ran anyway um it was whenever they were doing those those bikes so i've thought about restructuring it and doing different stuff with it but i always just end up with the the basic clean shape or not clean shaven but closely trimmed and trimmed underneath beard as as kind of the style that i always fall back on and i, I well, just like you it. have okay prepare yourself i'm about to compliment you no um <laughs> i can't you hear have you a... you're breaking up <laughs> i'm teasing you i'm teasing. oh not i'm sorry up. checking my mic <laughs> um you have a very uniquely colored beard and I think it's, it's really nice looking because of the, how it's dark on top and then kind of fades to the silver on the bottom. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah. So, I've, I've worked on that before. The coloration of your beard, Michael's beard is, is really kind of unique. It gives it a, I wouldn't want you to shave your beard just for that. Oh, the right. Coloration has a lot to do with, you know, the look, your look. Yeah. And that is a, that is definitely all age and genetics, I guess. Um, when I was younger, it was a very dark beard. Like when I was even as late as 40, it was almost it was very dark, very, very dark brown, almost black. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, the cool like thing it. about beards too, for, for, for people who like to write male characters with facial hair, the beard can say a lot about that character's character, you know, um, if they are very particular with the way it's shaped, it's if, if it's a certain length, if they don't care how it looks and it just grows everywhere. Think about that. You can Google beard styles and entire lists with little pictorial images of beard styles will come up and they all say something different about, yeah. they all tell a different character and you can choose which how to describe them and how to take care of them and whatever else. You know, so, one, one of the other things that's interesting about a beard when you have one that's like mine where it's I'm, I'm a caucasian person with a dark mustache and beard for at least the area around like my mouth is it it allows for accentuated facial expressions like when i smile my smile is accentuated by the fact that you see the mustache and and the beard shift and move when yeah. i do like this i get like a you know that i don't know what kind of look that is inquisitive or skeptical maybe <laughs> That yeah. gets accentuated. There are ways that one of the things I really do enjoy about 
uh, about having a beard is I have a, a fairly expressive face where I'm, you know, moving my eyebrows and I'm twitching my, like I, I twitch sometimes when I'm laughing, I'll twitch my lips around and that gets all accentuated a little bit with the beard to kind of give uh, a little bit more emphasis to those facial expressions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, I, yeah, that's I, mean, yeah, yeah, I enjoy it. Along with that, they're a prop. Like yeah. facial hair and beards are like a prop. Like you can do this when you're in conversation. Oh God, yeah. You can on it, fascinating. You know? you can play <laughs> with it. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's it, it there are different emotionalities to just what you do with your beard. Yeah. You know? You can you I've can actually... do the, you can do a skeptical look by doing this number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... Wow, wow, that was that had quite a visual impact. <laughs> I will tell you, I have noticed CT when you are really thinking about your answer on some of these things, you will stroke yeah. your goatee, and I can tell that you're really giving this some thought because yeah. it's a habit you have. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, it's very telling, isn't it? Uh oh, CT's head's about to pop. <laughs> Oh no no! I never think I never take it like that. I take it like, ooh, since he's about to drop some some wisdom on us, let's see what he's gonna say. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, I'm gonna wrap it up. This was a great episode. I liked. I liked. I learned a lot. Um, it was interesting. Grossed out a lot, but also fascinated. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you for sharing with that. That was pretty cool. All right. So. Uh, this concludes this episode of The Writing Guys. And if you have any questions that you would like answered about how men think, um, go to writingguys.net and visit visit us. Click the button that says Ask Us a Question. Uh, there's a really short form that pops up. You don't have to leave your name or an email. Just shoot us a question. And we will try to get it on the show and answer it for you. And then be sure to like, follow, or subscribe to The Writing Guys podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. We'll see you next time. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.